All right. Um, I really like this. When it comes to our personal, the decisions we make for our personal business, uh, you know, sometimes you, you're creating value, of course, or at least trying to, uh, but you can easily be, get pulled into caring about the hype or generating hype for your business. So if I'm in a business, should I care at all about the hype and or or should I just focus on the value? Is it wrong to use hype for what you're doing if there is value or is it only wrong if there's no value at all? So um, uh, people can uh, conflate hype with marketing, right? So in the, uh, I'm a pro pro proponent of this model that I've, uh, I've been developing called the adventure model. And the idea is that um, your, your marketing, well, let me just boil it down to this. You want to make sure that when you're selling a product, that uh, you are you are netting a profit, even a small profit, uh, from the sell selling a product. What happens at times is that people sell a product at a at a loss, right? In the hopes of, as it gets more traction, you know, they put out a product, they they'll sell it at they should sell it at five hundred dollars, but they're selling at two hundred dollars to get people in the door, and later on they're going to increase the price as they get um, a good visibility. This is a very hard idea. Right? This is first the market, saturate the market sort of idea. You need a lot of money that often other people's money that you're willing to waste on the hope that you that you take. Um, I do not recommend doing that. What I recommend is that you, you sell a product so that you always have a profit on it, even if it's minimal. That way you have a reason to continue making the product and then let the value of the product, let you're so focused on the value that the product is providing you that the person who buys it has to sell someone else about it. This is the thing that's so so interesting. If you find a fruit tree somewhere, if someone finds a fruit tree, or you, you find a fruit tree, and then you tell someone else, you plant, sorry, you plant a fruit tree, and then so, someone comes and gets a fruit from you. Now, if that person goes off and someone says, hey, I would love to have a fruit. I don't know where to get some. The person who bought it from you, now they gain value in the eyes of this new person if they tell that other person about your fruit tree. It's a no-brainer. They have to tell this other person in order to get that value. The person is a walking, I want to give value to somebody. I don't know how. Someone says, I have information that will help you, and you naturally would do that. That's what common threads are. That's what forums are like. That People are just naturally want to tell people where the fruit trees are. And so uh, if you there, provide- there is, there is some element, some situations where you wouldn't, right? Uh, I find a nice restaurant spot. I don't want to have long lines there. I get more value from keeping it a secret than I do from telling other people. Yeah, so that's one of the that's one of the things that the business owner has to watch out for that the uh, that one of the characteristics of the value proposition that they're offering isn't that that some other people don't have the access to this information. It's a problem I have. Uh, let's say with um, I started off with uh, some of the services I, I subscribe to in order to get information about the market. Like, I don't want other people, I don't want them to become popular. It's the last thing I want, I, I want other people. Uh, Price is going to go up. <laughs> exactly. And so, and so let's say um, that company then, I expect them to make money based on the information that they're providing. Like, like that their main thing isn't a sale of this information that they're using. They are also using this information in order to make money. And they're just selling on the side in order to get some, some, some side action. Uh, that's not mm -hmm. their main thing. If your main thing <laughs> requires other people for you to be scarce, then you're then you're in trouble. So yeah, you're right. Those situations, it's up to the business owner to be like, oh shoot, I built something that the least the less people know about me, the more I'm valuable. No, thank you. No, thank you. But generally speaking, you gain value by telling other people, and you want to create a product or service that uh, that uh, lends itself that that is good enough that people want to talk about it. Yeah, that's why it's not always um, the best idea to make the cheapest product. Like, oh, what I'm trying to do is to offer it cheaper or faster or sooner. You're trying to offer a product that for whatever value proposition you're offering, someone else goes, oh, well, you have to, you have to do this. And so um, what happens is that um, people confuse hype with, with marketing because they go, I need to get people pumped about my uh, my product that oh it's so cool to have uh, have the product but if you're depending on that then you got to keep that fire going it's like sort of like keeping a fire going without the proper logs you're gonna have to keep on building uh, 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 adding fuel to the fire because it's not sustaining on its own um, you want a self-sustaining system and so uh, what you want to do is if you're gonna do any hype make sure that the hype is that you're underselling your product 
but that it still comes off as hype. So, um, Vitamix. So like, we'll you're like at, you're like at a bar, and you're like, "Honey, I'm gonna rock your world," sort of. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> it's more like you you wanna you wanna you wanna get the girl on your on your personality, and later on they find out that you're wealthy. <laughs> like you you <laughs> want there to be like the surprise factor that someone uses your product because they the hype got them to try this for this particular thing. And, oh, it turns out this other thing is there. So, for example, I, I love Fluvar shoes. I've been talking about them all the time. They're one of my case uh, uh, case studies. So you buy a Fluvar shoe, and it's so interesting. And what's so interesting about it is that the shoes are so unique. They're just so unique. And, um, and then you find out afterwards that they're limited edition. And then you find out afterwards that there's a secondary market. Like you don't buy Fluvok shoes because there's a secondary market. You buy them and later on you go, oh shoot, I could sell this for around what I bought it for or more. Oh crap. Now I have to tell somebody else about it if someone says I want to buy shoes. Now I have to buy shoes from them. So mm -hmm. the hype come, for Fluvok comes with, look at this crazy new design and then you find out later this extra information. So you can still do hype. Just make sure that the hype level and the value, the valuation of your actual product, that the value is higher than the... Uh, than the hype because what the hype is is you it's sort of like a credit card you are borrowing um trust or reputation depending on what's going on you're borrowing something from the future so you owe you you're you're, bar, you're borrowing expectations i guess you're you getting owe, credit exactly you are you owe the customer not just what you promised them but more you have to pay back the interest on the credit that you you purchase like you really have to think of it that way that you are, you're, you're, you're promising something. And so that person's expectation in their mind is always going to be more than what you think you promised. So if I'm a web developer and I promise someone a website, so someone comes to me and says, I want a website and I'm expected to make $100,000 a year off this website. And so, um, and I go, okay, I'll make you a website. I got to make sure that, Either I think that the website will make them $200,000 a year or whatever, $150,000 a year. And I'm saying, okay, yeah, $100,000 because I think they're lowballing it. Or I got to correct their assumption. I got to be like, I can't, you got to, I can't give you a website to give you $100,000. I got to give it uh, $50,000 and then then get $100,000. You got to under, um, under promise and over deliver because that person doesn't understand that when they're buying it from you, it's no guarantee. They think mm -hmm. they're getting something that'll give them this. And so mm -hmm. you have to make sure that you you match that um, uh, that expectation, which is it's it's very it's very interesting how um, as soon as you think about I'm going to provide a product that I'm netting a profit on, I'm going to let the value be the generator of the hype, and I'm going to under promise and over deliver. You basically have a recipe for a, a company that can last, a business that can last as long as you're you're willing to do it. Even if you're not making oodles and oodles of money. If you want to uh, take part in what we're doing, please go over to youtube.com slash happy for change and hit subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when we go live. Right now we're going live to the Happy for Change audience on Facebook, facebook.com slash happy for change, but that won't be the case forever. So you'll get access to the live shows on YouTube. Um, eventually the live shows will not be available after they're done. You'll only, everybody will get them for free live, but you'll have to be a patron on patreon.com slash happy for change in order to get the recorded content. Uh, so uh, you can get uh, for $10 a month, you can get the audio content and for uh, $25 a month, you get the video as well. So you can go back, rewind, look at things again. But on top of all of that, on uh, top of the other things that you'll get, you'll also get access to the Telegram audio and video chat group, uh, chat group and audio group. So that's really fun. We're going to be, you're going to have us in your pocket. You're going to be able to ask any question. Okay. You're building a website. You're starting a company. You're trying to stay motivated. Uh, you can't get out of bed in the morning, uh, whatever. We're going to be right there. You definitely want to participate in that. Jumpstart Live is on Telegram.